Hi guys, and welcome to the Sunderland vs QPR match preview. Now, of course, before we get into it, what is the rule recently that we've been making? Hit the like button. The people who don't absolutely disgust me because, of course, if you don't hit the like button, a puppy will... So hit the like button for me and then we can continue with our lives and know that we don't have blood on our hands. Thank you. Um, <laughs> get, get, I am sorry, guys. I bet there's some people who've only just recently subscribed and just think, this guy's a lunatic, but it's become a bit of a running joke now. But yeah, so if you hit the like button, that would be greatly appreciated. And of course, subscribe if you are new. But getting into the preview to the game, Sunderland do return to Championship action this weekend at the stage of a light. Of course, the first home game of the season, we did draw one all with Coventry. We then went and get a fantastic result away from home against Bristol City. And now it is... Back at the stage of light, taking on QPR, who had a bit of a mixed start to the season. They opened up with a, a defeat against Blackburn, but then they had an absolutely fantastic win against Middlesbrough, who should be up there come the end of the season. 3-2 win there. But, you know, during the week, they got uh, they got knocked out in the Cup um, against Charlton. I believe, I think it was Charlton. Let me just quickly check. Um, I'm almost certain it was Charlton. Yes, it was Charlton. one all, and then, of course, they lost on Pens. Uh, we, of course, got knocked out in uh, midweek as well against Chef Wednesday. I've already spoke about that. Horrible performance, but I'm presuming you know, QPR would have used the second string side just as we did against Chef Wednesday, so I'm not going to read too much into that. But I do believe they have two or three very, very key injuries. You know, you've got Willock, who is an excellent player, you know, scored against Middlesbrough actually, a very, very important player for them. Um, I believe Luke Amos as well uh, is injured again. You know, he's a creative mind, put playing behind a striker, very, very exciting play it as well. I believe that left back as well. I, I think it's Pal, you pronounce it. He's injured as well. So they've picked up a few injuries already into some very, very key areas. So if you want to play a team like QPR, who, you know, they do have some very, very good attacking threats and but like I say, with those attacking threats almost gone, or the majority or a good chunk gone, now is a good time to play them at the state stage of the light. Great get a great atmosphere going. And hopefully we can try and turn them over. But it won't be as easy as that. It's just because they've got a couple of players, important players, mind you, injured doesn't mean the rest of the players are going to fold. It's going to be a difficult game. But we're going to take a look at my sort of preferred 11. We're not going to go into as much detail as usual because it really, really is simple. Um, particularly because of what happened midweek against Chef Wednesday where we used our second string. We pretty much used, uh, well, we 11 completely new players as to what we've seen against Bristol City. And I want to go completely unchanged from the team that did take on Bristol City. If I put this graphic up on screen, this is what it looked like, or at least what it was supposed to look like. A lot of people have had it down as a three at the back, but if you actually watched the game and took notice, it really wasn't like that at all. It was more sort of 4-2-2-2 with, uh, with Evans and Neil, and in front of them it was Clark and Pritchard, and they would come out wide or drop into the centre if they need to, and then they'd have Sims... Uh, Sims and Stewart are pressing up top as well and then you'd have uh, of course Clark and Pritchard they, they would help out with the press in the sort of triangle or a square they would press forward but if they did have to drop out wide and then pull back they would do so it wasn't technically really if you had a look at the game it didn't look like there was a three at the back really at all um, but it, they could use it like that it's very um, that sort of system and the players on the pitch, it could be quite dynamic in that sense and they could, it could be quite fluid and change as and when needed. But that is pretty much what I would do. I would go completely unchanged because absolutely no one made themselves a case to start this weekend. You know, not one player give themselves even nearly... You know, it wouldn't surprise me if maybe Alex Neal maybe made one change. Maybe he might have, you know, he might have looked at QPR and think, oh, they have this weakness or that weakness. So maybe this player, maybe Embleton, someone like that. Or maybe Roberts, maybe. But over the course, you know, if you look at it as an isolated performance against Wednesday, it, all of them are rubbish. They were, they were rubbish. You know, I think the only player here at the minute who I look at that 11, that played at Chef Wednesday, I think, not necessarily should start, but does have somewhat of a case, or I wouldn't be completely gobsmacked, it would be Trey Hume. Because I think he's not putting a foot wrong, the lad. I don't think he's putting a foot wrong. Other people have agreed with, oh, sorry, disagreed with me, which is fair enough, but I genuinely think Trey Hume could do a job. I absolutely do. I believe in the lad, and I think he should be given a run, given that, you know, Gooch isn't a natural right-back. And particularly that first half against Bristol City, Gooch was absolutely all over the place. He improved as the game went on. I'll give him that absolutely fantastic as the game went on. But the first half an hour, 40 minutes in particular, well, pretty much the first half, positionally, he was horrid. Absolutely horrid to watch, you know. He, because he is an attacking-minded player, he's not a defender. He gets sucked in by the ball, he gets dragged by the ball, so he gets excited, oh, the ball's near me, I'm going to bolt after it. And that it's that sort of dog-with-a-bone type uh the type of attitude that he has, which isn't necessarily bad, but when you're playing right back, you can't just run into the centre of the pitch going after the ball because you've got, you know, the striker and 
their, their winger behind you and he was leaving them time and time again and he kept on doing that and it was awful. But um, yeah, as I say, he, he stuck to his man a little bit more in the second half. But for me, Trey Hume, he could uh, argue a case. But other than that, you know, you've got a team that have just turned that around and the momentum to get that 3-2 win against Bristol City, which is not easy whatsoever. I will keep that momentum going. Let's try and keep that momentum going. Stewart and uh, Sims up top at the stage of light as well. That could be dangerous. So, so dangerous for QPR because, you know, we saw how dangerous it could be. The press was excellent. They're so strong and it's not like Stewart sometimes up top. He can be an isolated figure because, yes, he's a big lad, but he can hold it up. But then he has no one else around him. He can, he can really, you know, he can do just as what he does because there's no one else who can play off him who can hold up the ball also. So then Ross Stewart can make runs in behind. But then two can both do it because they're both brick shit out. Is it? Sorry, brick shit out is if you know what I mean. Big, strong lads, pace about them. It's a very, very exciting partnership. So that is the lineup I would go with. I would go completely unchanged. So yeah, I apologise. I'm not going into too much depth, but I'm just so deflated from that um, that performance midweek. You know, like I said, I expect us to lose that game. I predicted it a loss against Chef Wednesday, but I wanted to be able to say after the game, oh well, he played all right, so maybe he could do a job on Saturday. He might make a case. So he played actually all right despite the loss. Do you know what I mean? Or oh, he looked quite exciting. He looked pretty solid at the back. But there wasn't anyone, unfortunately. So no one has even remotely crossed my mind to start, other than the 11 that did start last week against Bristol City. Um, but now, in terms of my predictions for the game. So I predicted a draw against Coventry. I got it bang on. Uh, I predicted a loss against Bristol City. And, of course, we won. I predicted a, a defeat against Chef Wednesday. got that right. So I've got two out of three right so far. So we're not doing too badly but this will be the first time this season I'm going to predict a Sunderland win. I think it's going to be tight, but I am going to go for a Sunderland 1-0 win. And I think it will be Ross Stewart with the goal. I think it will be a first half goal, maybe the sort of 30 minute mark. And then it will be a relatively even game, uh, but not with too many chances made. I think we might cancel each other out. And I think we'll see it out for a Sunderland 1-0 win. So that is my preview for this game. It's not going to be easy at all. I'm, I'm just... Think you know if they had more of their attacking options, sorry, attacking options available, and if the rumours are sort of correct, you know it, that they're not playing Amos and uh, and Willock as well. Like I say, because they are crucial to the way they play. Um, I think it'll sort of le lessen the load a little bit on us if they were playing. Maybe it would have been a draw or even a defeat because I think those players are that good and I rate them that highly. But they are key players, and you know if we've got that bit of momentum going, we've got that belief of managed to shift that result around against Bristol City after going behind. I think we might be a bit too strong for him. So I'm going to go for a 1-0 Sunderland win. Now, in terms of transfers as well, Alex Neal has spoke this morning, um, pretty much saying that, yes, he's confident that he's going to get a few more bodies through the door before the transfer window closes, but there's no one sort of on the way up now. There's no one sort of imminent. And, you know, it, it has, it's been a little while since our last signing, before the first game of the season was our last signing, really. And... You know, people can get frustrated. Alex Neal definitely cuts a, a frustrated figure. I'm sure that people behind the scenes are. But I would much, much rather us be patient and wait and cherry-pick players that we actually want and actually need rather than sign a body or get players on a free just for the sake of it, purely to appease the hunger of the fans for a signing, if that makes sense. I would absolutely wait until deadline day if needs be, if there's going to be players available then, that Alex Neal believes that we need and actually want not just oh right this play is actually all right but and he's on a free or he's available now so let's go get him now just to keep everyone off our back i don't want that we've done that in the past and look how it's turned out i'm not going to egg the, the you know the club on to just sign plays for the sake of it we've done that millions of times and what just happens we get relegated twice in a row and get stuck in league one so you know i'm more than happy to be patient i can admit that there's frustration you can see it on alex neil's face as well it's on my face as well because we do need bodies in drastically and desperately but I'd rather us be patient than rush it. But that's it, guys. That is my preview for the, the QPR game this weekend. Of course, down below, would you go unchanged or would you make a change or two? Let me know and uh, what the score is going to be, what your score predictions, let me know in the comments. What do you think about the transfer system so far? Like What we've been doing? Are you happy to be patient or do you think we just need to get bodies in? Again, in the comments. But there we go. Like, subscribe, and of course, take care and stay jammy.